with beer. Hey, podcast kittens, it's Kathy Cat and Lady Beard. Welcome to another wonderful episode of Cat, Cat with Beard. Beard. Oh my goodness, oh this my is God. insane. This is wild. There's so much testosterone in the room. We have the guest to end all guests today, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome my dear friend, Japan-dwelling Aussie pro wrestler, Hartley Jackson. Hello, thank you for having me. My pleasure, good to see you, I'm sir. a little bit introverted, so I can't be as energetic as you guys. Oh, no, no, you just be just, you. Just yet. You do yet. you. Um, for those who are simply listening to the podcast and not looking at the visual, um, uh, my dear friend, Hartley Jackson, we're actually from the same city in yes. Australia. And uh, you've been in Japan for how long? You've been in Japan long time. Uh, well, I first oh, came in two thousand six. Every ago. year it's been on and off, mm-hmm. and then I moved here in two thousand sixteen. Okay. A little bit of time in America, then back just before Corona. Okay. So and look. since you can't see uh, Hartley Jackson, his arms are bigger than my head. Yes. <laughs> this is what an actual pro wrestler looks like. This <laughs> man is jacked. Can you just like yeah. show your arms to the, yeah, to the, pop a bicep to the camera? Yeah. For the camera. Uh, oh my god! That one's 50 centimetres, this one's 52. <laughs> oh my gosh, 52 <laughs> centimetres of biceps. Mm. Holy moly. I love how I sit in this room calling myself a pro wrestler and then, then Jackson walks in and I'm suddenly yeah, I look like an ant. Yeah. It, I, I mean, we have like a staggering here of like Lolita fashion, <laughs> and then we get stronger and right. stronger. Most, more muscle mass. It's like an the evolution. Left, the left side of the <laughs> yeah. room, the more muscle mass. Whereas I feel this is the small side, and it goes up. Oh my oh, goodness! Oh, no, what? Yeah. <laughs> We'll get to that in Not, a bit. Yeah. We are jumping ahead. Now, first yeah. things first, you're right. a pro wrestler, sir. Yes. I, too, yes. am a pro wrestler. Yes. And actually, I know. you were one of my pro wrestling coaches of in course. Australia. Oh, yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. Long, long time ago. Yeah. I can't even remember how that started. How did you first come through the door? Uh, for, for, so, for your school, I was living in Hong Kong at the time. Mm. And I had, like, my two weeks for Christmas or whatever in Australia. Yeah, and so I was going and training with all the, all the yeah, all I remember the that you in went, Adelaide. Yeah. So I came to a uh, uh, Jags Fed mm. and uh, to Jackson's Fed, and um, yeah, it was tell you what. So so Jackson's wrestling school in Australia, they kind of specialize in teaching people the Japanese style mm. of wrestling. Uh, we did about two and a half hours of straight squats and push ups yeah. and sit ups oh and whatnot. God. Yes, yeah, on the first day, the first yeah. day, yeah. Oof. Yep. <laughs> um, think, did, I don't think we did the the poker cards, but we did a lot, lot of squats. We yeah. did a lot of squats, a good five hundred of them or something. Yeah, yeah. Basically, the, the Japanese squats? style is very yeah. harsh, uh, harsh training regime. Yes. So Wait, that's that's a, that's leg day. No. Well, that's it's start start of uh, that's your cardio. A day. Oh my <laughs> yeah. god! You haven't okay. got into the wrestling. Yeah, yet. we haven't even made it to the wrestling. <laughs> oh, we haven't made it to the weights room <laughs> yeah. either. Yeah. Oh, before we yeah. go, that well, how tall are you? How heavy are you? I think these kind of things are important. Yeah, one hundred and eighty-three centimeters. So I'd like to, as I've gotten fatter, I've, I've, shr- <laughs> I've shrunk. So I used to be around about six one, but now I'm teetering on the five eleven, the six foot mark. <laughs> as I've gotten because, fatter. Yeah, I at the start of this year I was one hundred and forty kilograms. Oh. And wow. now I'm down to 125. Oh, so I'm trying to wow. shred up and not be so fat. <laughs> it, it just feels like there's a tank in the room. There's so much testosterone here right he's, he's now. A, he's yeah. a large Slightly. gentleman for anyone who's... You should look much of the video and have watched the yeah. video. He's a large Once gentleman. We have, we have a YouTube channel, guys, in case you are listening. You will see... The the genominous and also, also but what you'll not be able to see is is just that smell of testosterone in the air right now. <laughs> yeah. This is just what you smell all day. Yeah. For you, it's yeah. just a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope it's, it's a good smell. It's, it's a great <laughs> contrast with the delicacy yeah. of Kenny Cat and then, and then Jackson on the side. The so left side yeah. and right inside of the room are just like poor poor opposite right now. How did you get into pro wrestling? Whoa, that's a that's a that's a short story. Oh, that's <laughs> a short story. Uh, we used to, me and my friends used to fight each other in the backyard. Is it uh, like doing um, backyard pro wrestling, or you'd have well, fisticuffs in the backyard? Backyard pro wrestling, but it was actually just fighting. You just beat each other. Yeah, because during school we used to fight a lot with uh, each other, really? and uh, my friend at the time, Havoc, you know Havoc. Havoc, yeah. Yeah, so. He was doing a, a website, like getting into the internet. This was before internet was kind of a thing. He yep. was learning how to make pages and all that sort of stuff. So we did one on our backyard fighting. And an old retired wrestler came across the page as they were doing research for a book. 
And then they contacted us about, would you like to be a pro wrestler and help train these other guys? Because we, we never knew there was wrestling in Australia and that kind of died off in the late seventies. And yeah, that's where it kicked off. We wow. contacted him what? and yeah, he had a wrestling ring and a kickboxing gym that he built years ago and started from there. Wow. What? He kind of got scouted through pages? Yeah, because there was a book release called 100 Years of Pro Wrestling yeah. in Australia. I don't know that. And they'd left out quite a chunk of stuff. So they were researching for the second part of that book. And that's when they stumbled across our page. And uh, yeah, it went from there. I was not aware that that was your uh, foray into mm. pro wrestling. Mm. So you start out basically backyard brawling like Kimbo Slice. Yeah, well, that's it. Because <laughs> like, back then we thought, you know, obviously wrestling's entertainment. It's mm. a lot of fun. Mm. But growing up, it was, uh, you know... It was a legitimate sport, so mm. we treated it as a legitimate sport. So mm. when we did it in the backyard, mm. it was, you know, winner, winner takes all. Um, Katie Cat, I'm sure you've heard um, that pro wrestling is often referred to as the F word, yes? The F word? F-A-K-E. Fan oh. Uh, yeah, no, fantastic! <laughs> Fabulous! <laughs> For <laughs> everyone! <laughs> yeah. The old four-letter F word, F-A-K-E. Yeah. Oh, you've heard that okay. One? Yeah. Wait, I thought that is like a, the forbidden word. Well, many four-letter words that start with F for forbidden catty cat. Fork, <laughs> fish, fair. Sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> where are we going with this. All right, so wrestling. Yeah. Okay, first of all, okay, I might start asking questions that no one's comfortable with in the room. If, if that is the case, then let me know. But... Um, what is different from the type of wrestling where you wear cool outfits and you have like crowds of like loyal fans to the type of wrestling that you see, for example, at the Olympics? Oh. Uh, the basis is the same, really. Is that's where the orange, uh, the oranges, <laughs> oranges, the origins. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> the oranges. We're talking about fish and <laughs> the fork. Sorry, so poor <laughs> Caddy Cat. We've known each other a long time, so we're just shooting the breeze. Poor Caddy Cat has been roped uh, into this. She's like, what's going uh, on? That's where the origins are. She's not in the middle. Come from. Yeah, the, or or the origins. So we, where we did, we did oh, <laughs> it's been a it's been a long it's been a long twenty three years. That was that was a <laughs> twenty three years. You're so just... your career career is twenty three. Twenty three years, years now. Yeah, twenty three. Wow. I started. Yeah, training when I was 17, turning 18, and first pro match was 19. But to oh. get back to your question, yes, yes the oranges of uh, pro wrestling started with the amateur wrestling. So, that's so stuff in the Olympics we all kind of know how to do that style of wrestling. And during our pro wrestling training, we actually learned that style of pro wrestling, uh, which is kind of like the oranges, the oranges. <laughs> So confused. You are popping off the worst dad joke ever, and you can't stop popping off it. How excited uh, are you? Oh, so, I was so, going so, 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 to do a knock-knock joke. <laughs> oh, no, 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 but but go down we, we don't have time. We so don't that, have time. So, so your first yeah. pro match was when you were 19. You wrestled yes. in Australia for a while. How did you get wrestling in Japan? Uh, I went on an excursion to America to wrestle there, oh. and... We got in contact with a few people over there and had some bookings. I went with Mikey Nichols, who's a wrestler from Perth. Okay. And we went over together, not, you know, this was a brand new world to us all. And uh, we got invited to go to uh, the New Japan Dojo, which was located oh, wow. in Los Angeles. Oh, wow. Um, so we went there and uh, loved it. It was torture. We trained in the Japanese style, which was the hundreds of squats, hundreds mm. of push-ups every day kickboxing jujitsu training and yeah that's where i kind of fell in love with the japanese style of wrestling and mixed that with what i had learned from australia which is very similar but then you know it added to my repertoire Wait, this sensei, was in the sensei teacher yeah. question you keep saying like japanese style so yeah. what kind of styles are out there uh, there's a multitude of styles. Like America, you have your more entertainment-based style. Those are the WWE type style. Uh, your Japanese style, which I refer to as a Japanese style, which is a more fight-based style. Mm -hmm. It's very hard-hitting. Uh, they call it strong style because they have their strong fighting spirit. Mm -hmm. So you bring all those elements of that fighting spirit out when you train that strong style. Oh. And then there's the Mexican style. Mexican Lucha Libra, which is like mm. high flying, you know. Mm -hmm. Lots of jumping and yeah. doing triple backflip twists. And then the kind of like now your Australian wrestling would be a mixture 
of everything. Of all those things. And then also you've got your UK style, which is more like a ground-based wrestling style. German style? The Germans have their own thing going on as well. Well, we do? Yeah. Oh. It's actually, wrestling's quite big in Germany. There's oh. a big company there, and they're, they're doing quite well on the Europe scene. And, yeah, it's just really exploded in the last 15 years. People have, you internet know, internet, internet has internet. helped expose that kind of, you know, wrestling to the rest of the world. Wow. So there are different mm. wrestling styles out there mm. and you started to like the Japanese style. That's very yeah. hard hitting, a hundred million mm. squats and mm. and fighting spirits and okay, I got that now. Yeah. So a that. strong style. So comparatively in the American style, there's a lot of the old F A K E elements thrown uh, in. So there's a lot of kind of I'll look like I'm punching yeah. Jackson, but there'll be things like this. Uh, like a chat, mm -hmm. check on here. So it makes that sound. Yeah. I was actually gonna hit him. In Japan, it's, we just crack each other. Yeah. Oh, you actually like full on. Full yeah. On. Headbutt, oh forearm, elbow, oh. yeah, everything. Oh. There's a lot of kind of kneel yeah. in the middle of the ring and someone runs up and kicks you as hard as they can in the head. Yeah. Okay. That kind of thing. Sorry, can I ask another question? Of course. Like, if the American one is like very show based, which mm. seems to be a cultural thing as well, mm. um, and the Japanese one is like full on punching each other, do you have heroes and villains? Yeah, like it seems to be an American thing, right? Uh, Americans is very, uh, that, that style of wrestling and time style is very big on heroes and villains. Mm -hmm. uh, in Japan, it's you do have your heroes and villains, but it's more of a fan's choice oh. of you might not like that person because of just their style or what they do to your favorite wrestler. Oh. So there's not like the the story or entertainment hero villain. Mm. The fans here kind of choose who the heroes and villains are. Uh, and what's interesting in Japan is as well, you'll switch a lot of the time. You'll yeah. wrestle, wrestle, we call faces and heels. The faces yeah. are the heroes and the heels are the villains. Oh. You can wrestle face one day, mm. heel the next day, and then face again the day after. Yeah. Oh. So it's very, it's actually, it's an interesting dynamic. Yeah, so in to. Tokyo, I'm, I, I was a heel for a decade here, mm. well over a decade. And then I turned into a face, which is a good guy mm. through the story. Uh, but when I travel to country towns here in Japan, I'm the villain. Oh. So, because it's a different, uh, like, area of fans, I look like the bad guys in, <laughs> you know, <laughs> evil. So I play that part, you mm -hmm. know, while we're still doing the fight-based. But in Tokyo, people wrestling. have understood by this time that yeah. you're a, an adorable teddy bear yes, type of character. Course. I Squidgy, want... large, yeah. huggable. Yep. Teddy bear character, I can see this coming. I'm going get, yeah. to get, get, get some Bob Sap again. And, uh... Uh, <laughs> this young lady, yeah, it's, it's, it's I had happen. to teach this young lady who yes. Bob Sap I, was. Oh. My so God, I was, as someone <laughs> who's so a sorry. foreigner dealing so with Japanese sorry. show business, mm. had never heard of Bob wow. Sap until so I mentioned, and of course, Bob Sap. So who's Bob Sap? Go in the side. Ice cream bar. Ice cream bar. There's ice cream bars here. Amazing. Yeah, the moment the word teddy bear came out, I was like, oh, this is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get, I mean, I'm never, I'm never going to live that moment down. You're going to get now. sapped. You got sapped. Yeah. I got sapped. Sapped again. So, sapped again. Yeah. Uh, what. Are there different rules then comparing the different styles? Cool. Well, here's a question. Yeah, uh, in Japan, it's again more of a ground based fight style game as well. So, here, if you touch the rope, it's considered a great escape. And people mm. are like, oh, that's great. Oh. If you touch the rope in, a, in a America or entertainment style, it's more like, uh, you know, mm. he kind of. It's had like to use the rope. Sissying yeah. out. Yeah, you oh. weren't technically good enough to get out of a yeah. hold or something. Yeah. So, you had to grab the rope. To but get out via technicality. With with Japan though, their fight spirit lets them enough power to get to that rope. So mm. the fans enjoy that fight for them to get to the rope. Because there are holds in wrestling where you just cannot, cannot move. get you can't get out of it. No, you can't mm. move. You have to climb to the ropes to get it. Whereas in the American entertainment style, you can work and let them get out, but mm. keep them in like mm. Um, it's all about entertaining the fans. Mm -hmm. And what the Japanese fans like seeing in almost every match is that fighting spirit. Mm. And it's about kind of who can get hit and injured the most and not oh. give up. Yeah. It seems to me a little bit there is a lot of cultural connotation in it. America is a great country for show and entertainment, so there seems to be great entertainment base and like heroes and villains, mm. the kind of stuff that we see in movies. Well, in Japan, Japan is a culture of gambadis and the idea of like, you know, you, you work really hard, you study mm. really hard, you get hit 10 times, but you stand back up and that kind of that still after all that suffering, you standing back up is kind of like a, mm. a cultural thing that is very much appreciated in this culture. Yeah, same as the sumo style of training. I mean, and, ha and how we live here 
is we live like the sumo style. We have our, mm. you know, yes, your senpais and you work your way up through the system, oh. through different, you know, uh, methods and... And did you live they, in the dojo? Sorry, I yeah, so yeah. that's how Question. we live is we live in a dojo. Yeah. We have, you know, rooms full of guys who are training to be pro wrestlers mm. and... You know, you have the gym downstairs, you have your pro wrestling ring. They get up to clean at seven. And, you know, I did all that when I was in Los Angeles at the uh, at the New Japan Dojo there. I did all the cleaning in the morning when you get up. So, you know, we've gone through all that system. Mm. And, yeah, that builds that spirit and character that leads you to... And now that you're a senior, mm. you laugh at the rookies when they get up to clean the toilets and whatnot at seven in the morning or you sleep until five oh, p.m. I am dead asleep. <laughs> <laughs> dead asleep. Good man. Yeah. Um, are there, like comparing the different styles, are there any rules, for example, um, what I just remember from watching WWF, uh, uh, I got that probably e? wrong now. WWE, I'm so sorry. The World Wide the Fund for Nature. <laughs> we all enjoy the rules of the World Wide Fund for Nature. Oh, God. Yes. No, That's fine. That's, don't worry, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I, I no, remember no, I still, as, a, as a kid, yeah. I loved watching WWE and then the villains, they would sometimes grab the cheers mm. and slap people mm. with the cheers mm. and stuff. Mm. Are there items you are allowed to use and not allowed to use depending on styles? It's like a technicality here. Uh, each company kind of have d different rules. You have like a hardcore based company, which will use chairs, tables, fire, thumbtacks, fire. all that sort of yeah. stuff. It's, it's absolutely nuts. Then you have your other company, which is like a fight based company. Mm. Yeah, there's so many different like styles and Japan has kind of also taken on those styles of wrestling and they do exploding rope barbed yeah. wire matches. and Barbed wire? Yeah, and then you get thrown into it and they, it explodes. Whoa. Yeah. I was, oh, oh <laughs> that was close. <laughs> Rules tend to be a match per yeah. match kind of system. Yeah. So on the same card, you might yeah. have a bunch of technical matches and then you'll have some yeah. hardcore. Or even... Even if it's a technical match, if it goes outside, once you're outside, outside the ring, there's, you know, it's a grey area mm. of you can use the rails, the guardrails to hit, push, and smash someone's head into, or you can grab a chair and use it. But if you use that chair inside the ring, then that's a disqualification. Oh. So there's kind of like each company there's different rules, but that's kind of like a general. And of course, if the referee doesn't see, no. and all kinds of then things can any, happen. Uh -oh. Anything is on. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's game on for young and yeah. old. Oh, oh damn. Mm. This is, uh, uh, yeah, they used to do matches in Japan when they have a, um, like on the edge of the ring, they'd have a tank with a, an alligator in it. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the electric eels. Yeah, tanks yeah. of electric eels. You try yeah. to throw the other guys with the electric Scorpions. eels. Scorpions. Yeah, it's, it was 90s was crazy. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. Electric eel. Wow, this is like a Japanese variety show. Like it really is. It really is. is yeah. It really yeah. is. Yeah. I think that's another kind of element of the culture which transcends several areas of show business. Mm. And that kind of that gain in kind of culture. So, yeah. so the kind of Japanese variety show style is mm. in there a little bit as well. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah it's like it's like um yeah downtown with violence. Mm. Downtown mm. with violence. How mm. many? Um, generally, on a normal match, how many rounds are there? What is general, How is it generally decided? Like, talk to someone who has yeah. no idea how the point system works. The sport. How does the sport work? So, if you're talking about point system, that's where the uh, English-based Europe style. Oh. They used to have rounds of wrestling, mm -hmm. you know, which would go anywhere from five to ten minute rounds, uh, three minute rounds, and whoever had the most points, which is like takedowns, touching the rope, pinning the person for three. Uh, and submissions and everything like that will score you points. And then after those five rounds, they determine a winner. But generally with pro wrestling today, it's if you pin someone, which is by covering them, mm -hmm. their, shoulders their shoulders to the mat for, three to, three, for a three count, mm -hmm. then you win. If you make them submit with a, uh, you know, like tapping. tapping out, uh, they verbally give up. Or you can be either counted out outside of the ring for 10 or 20 mm -hmm. seconds. It, it depends on which company. Mm -hmm and uh, disqualified and things like that. Mm. So that depends on the style as well, or does it does generally do? Rules of yeah. the match rule. specifically. Yeah, so mm. e each match can have like a specific rule. If it's a championship match, they might have an hour time limit. Uh, you might have a two out of three falls match. Yeah, the, the, the possibilities in wrestling are endless, which is why 
I think many people love it is because mm-hmm. there is that unpredictability and it's so different every time. So you're not just watching the same thing over and over again, mm-hmm. which is also fun. But with pro wrestling, there's that element of surprise all the time. Yeah, it really is kind of the greatest theatrical spectacle on earth because mm. in one show, all kinds of madness can, can happen. happen. Yep. Yeah, Ridiculous um, comedy matches and then super hard yeah. and strong stuff. Just, sorry. Yeah, and I, I recently spoke with a female pro wrestler, mm. um, Toxic Tekla, and she said sometimes males and females mix. Yeah. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. So that's also, so it's not gender separated. It can be, but it can also be mixed up. Yeah. Um, since I started wrestling here, I, like my first uh, company I wrestled for, I got put into the women's league. And mm, so, because I'm a cross dresser, yeah. it makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. I won the women's belt. <laughs> That's my first belt I got in Japan. But it was strange going yeah. in because, like, say in Japan, they want you to do strong style mm. pretty much all the time. And that includes if you're a man who gets put into the women's mm. league. Mm-hmm. So I was standing there, and yeah, they say, you need to hit the girls harder. And I'm Ooh. saying, I just want to make sure. I understand clearly what everyone's saying. <laughs> yeah. You want me to kick, I'm a grown man. You want me to kick a woman in the head? Go kick, she's gonna kneel down. I'm gonna kick her in the head and you're telling me do it harder, hard as I can. You're sure, are you sure? Can you sign a piece of paper oh my with some kind of legal disclaimer yeah. so that I can't get sued, please? Yeah. I was freaking out. I'm like, are no, you they really love that. to do that? They love it though. Cause I, oh, my finisher used to be a lariat, which was, yep. You know, the, the lariat. Big old clothes. I hit someone with this part of your arm, bang, across the chest. And I mean, I'm doing it. For real. Pretty hard. Yeah. So hard. It's would kill a man, you know? Oh, gosh. And I am killing a man, but they I keep coming backstage and I'm like, oh, next time, please, more hard. More hard. Yeah. What? More hard. And I'm just like, okay. Mm. I do it so hard to come back. Yeah, good, but next time, more hard. Oh, they love and it. And it turned into like, you know, the shave those sideburns from the Simpsons bit <laughs> where it's just like, I just don't know what you want me to do. Uh, uh, Until, more. yeah, I just smashed him one and his face all fucked up. <laughs> There we are. There's. There's. What's that there good then? There swear is. word number two for the podcast. This yeah. is oh, second swear word. Potty yes. mouth with yes. cat and beard. My goodness, filth from Japan. I wonder how we, where how we go off for time. For how we go off for time? Where was the podcast? oranges of the first that was swear the word? Orange. <laughs> How the minutes remain in this podcast? I need to check the time when we started. How many minutes we How have? Five, we have left? ten, four, four minutes, minutes remain. I, okay, I want. L- I would like to know more. So let's yeah. continue this in the next podcast because okay. there's a to- dozen more questions that I yeah, have. Yeah, we're going to talk yeah. a lot. I want to talk to you a lot more about actually the uh, the New Japan School and yep. your experiences um, with uh, Antonio and Noki because mm. you dealt with him. Yes, and also. You had experience with the WWE. Yes. So look, that's coming at you at our next episode of Cat With Beard, starring Hartley Jackson. What you need to do is make sure you've subscribed to the podcast. Oh, yes, please. Or whatever podcast thing you're listening to. Please. Press like and subscribe on the YouTubes. And after you do that, you need to head on down to Hartley Jackson's internet things and follow him. Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, just Hartley Jackson. At Hartley Instagram. Jackson. No, uh, not Instagram. Un- underscore. I think there's an underscore under the Twitter one. Some guy <laughs> stole my name. Oh. Yeah. Really? Someone stole your name? Yeah. Oh. So originally I was at Hartley Jackson and then I wanted to brand something new. Fair enough. So I changed my handle. I'm like, oh, that shit. Ow. Oh, oh my goodness. One second. <laughs> Caddy Cat, how can people email us if they want to email us? All right. If you want to find us at nippon at joqr.net. So write us an email. N-I-P-P-O-N at mark J-O-Q-R dot net is where you can leave your questions. And also, please don't forget to rank this podcast with the highest stars that you can rank it with. It will recommend it to more people. So, so that'd be and really great. Please head down to Ladybeard underscore Japan at the internet. Follow Ladybeard, my pop group, Babybeard underscore Japan, and... Can Kathy Cat. Find me. Type in Kathy Cat, both with a C, under bar TV. Kathy Cat, under bar TV. Or just <laughs> Kathy Cat, you'll find me on on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, on YouTube, anywhere. I've never heard so, so, so amused by Ugh. TV. No! <laughs> I know. Oranges and TV. <laughs> yeah. The things that amuse Hartley Jackson. Oh. We'll be back with another exciting installment of Hartley Jackson on the Cat with Beard podcast. I'm Turn. sorry. See you on next week with Cat, Cat with Beard. Beard. Bye. Bye. <laughs>